good way to start the morning here. A pile of chinkapin and walnut. I've tried falling everything back here in the, this draw. You can see trees going every which direction, but initially I tried to keep everything centered down here. That'll make some really good deer cover. We got a den tree right here for coon, possum, squirrel, orangutan, aardvark, a little bit of everything lives in that tree. These things are cutting pretty good, other than this one. Got just a little spot there in the heart. Hate to see it, but at least it's not on the outside. I'm going to walk over here and get the skitter. I saw it pinched. Got one or two that want to hang up. Everything just brush. Pretty good little draw of chink pen here. I noticed these yesterday dragging logs. I was like, man, I wanted to get over here, which I come back, I gotta push the brush out from around that one. That's a slick log. I had trouble sleeping last night. Just thinking about cutting these little tall trees that grow on these draws are fun to cut. Pretty, pretty, pretty wood. Now they're calling for some rain starting, uh, oh, about 20 minutes ago. And I can see when I got to the skitter here, there were some sprinkles on the tires. A little bit of water on the windshield here, so not really what we want. I don't think it's supposed to rain a lot today. I know Thursday they're calling for rain all day. Uh, when you're a logger, probably much like a farmer, you check the, you check the weather five, six, seven, 25 times a day. I know for us, weather is our biggest factor or enemy. We we fight and battle the weather more than we do anything. Just trying to work our jobs, trying to move wood, trying to keep logs coming out, hitting the ground, just everything depends on the weather. It's like a lot of people say like, oh man, you work outside, that's gonna be great. Well, here's the truth about working outside. About 15 days a year, it's absolutely nice, perfect weather. The other days, it's too hot, too cold, too windy, too wet, too dry, uh, too humid, uh, too ridiculous. It's just, there's always something. But you just kind of learn to deal with it. Uh, this kind of weather right here, I actually don't mind. If we have a little sunshine, it'd be a little better. But uh, you know, it's like 55 degrees. It's pretty good cutting weather. Obviously, you can still see, you can still work up quite a sweat. but. You can do that when it's zero. Hopefully, we can get back here and get some of these things out before the rain gets here. I always try to keep my log roads in pretty good shape, which I need to drop the blade. Kind of work this one over a little bit more. But it's not too bad. Good thing about making good log roads. They're there for the landowner for years to come. Like for us, they're here. On the next time we come and cut the track of timber, we want them to try to blaze new roads. Our existing roads are already here. Uh, I know this gentleman owns this property, has some hunters here. They really enjoy our log roads. I see deer when I'm cutting. I see deer when I'm dragging. But these, the deer, they don't mind this log skitter. They don't mind what's going on here. Everybody's always worried about that, oh, logging's going to scare your deer away. Man, they, they don't care. They could care less. I mean, they're not just going to come up and try to shake hands with us if we're cutting trees. They stay at a distance. If you look at our log roads every night and even during the day, they're just full of deer tracks. Coyote tracks, coon tracks, bobcat, fox, sasquatch, you name it. It's all right here in the log roads because animals are lazy just like we are as people. They want the path of least resistance just like we do. When I did trap, I always trapped off our log roads, so I caught a lot of cats and coyotes off our log roads. So I always try to leave our roads in pretty good shape for whoever's hunting the property. Another partial drag bunch there. I'm trying to take three at a time. Because with these, about three is all you can fit in the grapple and get out. And before somebody asks, why don't you grapple the small end? Well, occasionally you can grapple the small end, but you kind of rely on the taper of those stumps, the flare, to keep them in the grapple when you're dragging. And even then, sometimes they want to slip out. 
even when you're applying constant pressure, which that's what those blue lights mean there, because we've got constant pressure on our wrap. Trust me, I've, I've drug a log or two. I, I kind of know how to keep them in there and get them out of the woods. Three is optimal. Four is nice when you can do it. On um, these longer drags, I always try to take all I can, but at the same time, we don't really just pull the guts out of our machines and overwork them either. That's why we really have minimal breakdowns or downtime. It's just because we try to take care of our equipment the best we can. And it's always Kenny or I that's running it, so like I said it's pretty easy to keep track of. You know, who's beating up on it? In all honesty, I'm probably harder on it than Kenny is. Uh, there's times I get in here and I just... I get in a hurry and I'll kind of ram jam around a little bit, but even then, uh, compared to a, probably a lot of guys or a lot of companies or hired hands, we're pretty easy on these machines. So the rain's starting to get here now. What's the problem with trying to film and run the skitter? So I get to try to look through the camera lens when I need to be watching where I'm going. Yeah, so we're starting to get some, some rain now. You can see on the windshield here. Uh, hopefully we can try to get out what we got this morning. I didn't cut too many this morning, maybe like 16. Uh, it's, of course, it's still pretty early. It's just now a little after 9 o'clock. I know some of you guys get to the woods at daybreak, but I'm not one of those guys. These forks are junk anyway. We've had these forks for two or three machines and we've broke the mounting bracket time and time again and Brandon's welded them up. And, uh, they're just, they're not good forks. I think these are the actual John Deere brand forks. They just, we haven't had good luck with them, but I'll weld them back up and they're good for another few rounds until I rip them off again. But so luckily, again, he was close today with his rig welding, so he was able to stop in here and get his patch back up so we can run. Getting the full money of action today. Cutting, dragging, bucking, skid steering, now log trucking. I don't like to leave these logs under the high line, so that's why we try to get these out of here pretty quick. I don't think I'll get them all out today, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a good group effort. We got four piles here. One way down there, you see, way down there. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna drag out more, cut more, but it's kind of a been a one-man show lately. Dad's been doing what he can. Of course, we just try to get done what we can. It's slow going some days, that's for sure. So, last little bit of the day, I parked the log truck right here for a reason. Back there behind me is where I vote. I never miss an election. Hope you guys voted too. Hope you voted like the color of my truck. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know I did. Guys, I'll see you later. Kind of muscling around here. This is a 22 footer piece of stave log. As you can see, little Serco handles it with ease. I am going to try to put it down here easy though. That's a lot of log. <laughs> Lots of log. 